You may be seated. Thank you, Wanda, for coming to the prayer room today. We have a war room ministry that when we come to worship church on Sunday, there's someone praying in the war room. Prayer is essential in the church of Jesus Christ. Amen. Prayer becomes evil, death, the grave, gives us victory. Prayer is essential. Amen. I want to talk today as we begin a series on following Jesus about prove you love. Prove you love. Our motto at Connection Church is loving God, loving people. But it's not enough to say we love people. You have to prove you love people. Now you might say, well, <laughs> that's just simple. No, it's not. Because you got to love folks you don't like. You got to love folks you don't accept. You have to love folks that are different than you are. And so, I want to look today at how Christ proved his love for us. Okay? Now, here's our text today. Romans chapter 5, verses 6 to 11. For while we're still helpless, at the appointed moment, Christ died for the ungodly. Now, let me just stop there a minute. The yellow words are highlighted but for a reason. We were helpless without Christ. Sinners lost going to hell. Hell should not be the forgotten doctrine of the church. The reason Christ died, not only for us to go to heaven, but to escape hell. But also to live for him until that time comes we go to heaven. Amen? Amen. 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 You girls ready to write today? Okay. Well, here's the deal. I needed Christ more than he needed me. But he wanted me. He chose me. My mother always said, if you've been the only little boy ever lived, he would still died for you. That's how special Christ is for you and for me. That's how special Calvary is for you and me. That's what greater soldier he is. The sacrifice he made for the helpless because he was selfless. Let me repeat that. He died for the helpless because he was selfless. Okay? And so, at the appointed moment, it didn't just happen he was crucified. It was all appointed, appointed by God's timing, his sovereignty, his providential grace. And so, nothing happens by coincidence. God's in charge. And so, people say, well, you know, I'll get saved one day. No, you won't. you get saved when God draws you. If I be lifted up, I'll draw all men to me, Christ said. So you don't come to Christ on your terms. You come on his terms. And you are responding to how he first loves you and first called you, first died for you. For rarely will someone die for a just person. Though for a good person, perhaps someone might even die. Here's our verse for today. But God proved his own love for us in this way. While we're still sinners. Somebody say still sinners. Still Jesus died for me. Let's let it just soak in a minute. Man, we, we sometimes say so many things to the church, we forget the significance of it. While I was still a sinner, ungodly, lost, going to hell, Christ loved me enough to die for me. He climbed an old rugged tree called the cross and was impaled like a human piece of flesh and died for me. He, he died a grotesque, suffering sacrifice that Isaiah said he couldn't be recognized by his own mother. For me. So, should I not live for him? Anything I can't do for him? Anything I can't sacrifice for him? Let's face it. If he asked us to pay the ultimate sacrifice, he wouldn't compare it to his. So we're doing everything in the shadow of the cross. The shadow of Christ. But God approved his own love for us in that while we're still sinners, Christ died for us. Much more than since we have now been declared righteous by his blood, we'll be saved through him from wrath. You see, when God looks at me, he doesn't see me. He sees Jesus. And it's the death of Christ that saved me from the wrath of God. Christ stood in my place, my substitute on the cross of Calvary. And by his blood I've been healed, saved, and forgiven. And Christ passed over me and my sin because of my faith in him. You see, his blood we will be saved through, through him from wrath. For if while we we're still enemies, we were reconciled to God. Now, reconciliation means we, made, we were able to be saved. I want you to understand this. Reconciled does not mean saved. He prepared the way for us to be saved. Okay? To God through the death of His Son. Then how much more? Everybody say how much more? How much, how much more? more? Having been reconciled, will we be saved from his, by His life? And not only, not only that, but we also uh, rejoice in God. Ah, and by the way, church, we all rejoice. You hear me? We all rejoice. I'm so tired of seeing persimmon sucking Christians. They're so... They just sucked up and then dried up, dead up. Then he won't know if somebody wants what they got. No, I don't want you got. You're like a like a plague. Stop. <laughs> don't come near me. Don't talk to me. I'm a born again child of God. Don't you want to come to my church? No. 
Because you look dead, you are dead. Where's your joy? If the only joy in your life is a dishwashing liquid, you got a problem. <laughs> Christ brings joy. He'll, he'll just give you a life. You, if you want to ride the journey of life, it's better than the plume ride at the uh, at Kingdom. And I've been, I've been with my family, the front one in that log. And I've gone on that cliff. And I have yelled and got the picture to prove it. But I tell you right now, we all be so excited about Jesus Christ because guess what? We are not going to win. We've already won. Amen. Read the rest of the book. We won the death of hell and the grave because Christ died for me and you. Okay? So let's don't act like we're losers. It's like we're winners. Amen? Are you with me, girls? With me, scribes? Ready to go? Boy, you look good today. You got Where's the rest of my... There, you're right there. Yeah. All right, man. How you doing? Good? Good. All right. Some of y'all may be visiting today. Um, these, these are our young ladies and gentlemen that are writing down notes, taking notes, or sharing what I say, and y'all are doing a good job. But when y'all draw me, draw me real thin, okay? A stick man's... Right. Perfect, just like a picture. You did a good job with that. Now, and not only that... We also rejoice in God through our Lord Jesus Christ. We have now, now get, we have now received this reconciliation to Him. We have now. I like that word now. It doesn't mean I got to do something to get it. It's been done for me to receive it. Amen. Now listen to me. We're not saved by works. We're saved to work Amen. by His grace. Okay. Now, how can I be sure I'm saved? Let's get this down before I go on. People a lot of times are unsure. If it looks like a duck, swims like a duck, has feathers like a duck, quacks like a duck, good chance it's a duck. Well, a Christian. <laughs> There's always one, never crowd. Thank you so much. You can just quack and have me on to. Okay. What I'm <laughs> what I'm saying is, people all look at us, hear us, see us, and know we're a child of God. Amen. Don't blend in the world. Stand out from the world. Be a witness for him, okay? Now, I want, to, I want to tell you what the Bible says. The Bible says A, B, C. Everybody know ABCs? A, B, C's. How can I be saved? And I'm sure I'm saved. Number one, admit. Admit you're a sinner. Look what it says in Romans chapter 3, verse 23. For all have sinned. Everybody repeat that. For all have sinned. For all have sinned. And fall short of the glory of God. Everyone that's ever born is born a sinner. Everyone that's ever born is born a sinner. And you fall short of the glory of God. It means no matter what you do, how much you work, how many good deeds you do, how much you feed the poor, not a bad thing to do, but you can't reach God. You can stretch your arm out as far as you want to stretch your arm out, and you still can't reach God. We're too short. I know about short. <laughs> I've been short almost all my life. You'll get that when you get home today. There's, there's three thing, There's two things being short. You are the last one knowing it rains. But you are the first one knowing it floods. Praise God. Yeah. <laughs> For all have sinned. For those who think they don't need God, they're wrong as wrong can be. For those who think they're not a sinner, they're as wrong as wrong can be. You can't help but be a sinner. Even when you're saved, you can't help but be a sinner. It's how we're saved by His grace, not by our works. Does anybody really think we can work enough to get God? No. Huh. For all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. So the first thing we have to do is admit we've sinned. The second thing is you've got to believe in Jesus. A, B, C. Believe in Jesus. Now, we think, well, we all know that. Move on. No, we don't all know that because we don't live it. Don't tell us you believe you don't live it. If you don't see that fruit falling off in your life, guess what? You don't love it. You've got to prove your love. Prove your faith. Wait a minute, I thought I was saved by grace. You're saved by grace, but it's not free. It's not cheap. We live a life sacrificial of Christ Jesus. People want free grace because they can live like hell. Amen. Amen. It ain't like that. If you understand Jesus, you won't live for Jesus because he died for you and he's resurrected in you. People say, well, how do I know I'm saved? Just ask Him. Huh? Am I saved, Jesus? He'll give you peace. If you don't have peace, guess what? You better hit the aisle talking to Jesus about getting saved. You say, what do you mean? I think I'm saved. Wrong answer. 
If you don't have the absolute assurance you're a born again child of God and absent this world means you're going to heaven, you better come today and give your life to Christ. God did not go to the cross to make you unassured of your salvation. Now once you got it, you got it. I've known people that asked Jesus Christ in their life every Sunday. And I've come to one conclusion. They leak. <laughs> they don't understand. You see, they think it's based on what they do. It is not. It's based on what He's done. He has saved me, died for me, rose for me. When I give my life to Him, it's a done deal. Now, do I always live safe? No. Do I always feel safe? No. Am I always safe? Yes. Why? Because in 1958, in November, I gave my life as a seven-year-old boy to Jesus Christ. He's kept His promise to me all these years. I've not lived for Him. He's always lived for me. Somebody say amen. amen. This salvation we better stop playing around with and know, we know, we know, we know we're born again child of God. Because guess what? Ready or not, Christ is coming. Now, A, admit, B, believe, C, confess. Oh boy, I like that one. I know a lot of folks who like to confess for others. They want to confess from else's sin. Right? Well, here's what it says. Confess. Confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. If you declare with your mouth Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised the dead, you'll be saved. That's Romans 10 9. If you declare, that means talk with your mouth. People say, well, I'm not sure I do that. Well, you can. You talk about everything else. You telling me you can't talk about Jesus? You talk about everything else. Talk about the ball game, about the weather, you gossip about this, about that. And guess what? Women are not the only ones to gossip. Men also gossip, but they call it sharing the world's secrets. <laughs> Go to the courthouse, see those old men sitting down there. Talking about the weather. Talking about, I love that song where it talks about when old women talk about old men. You know that song? Yeah, yeah. Well, you know what? It's just good to talk. We like talking, don't we? But you know what? We not make sure we're saying something. How I many folks talk about saying anything? Well, you don't understand, preacher. I'm just talking about them to help them. You don't understand. You're gossiping. Let me explain to you. If you're not talking to the person, or you're not talking in loving kind about the situation, you're gossiping. It's better to keep quiet and know you're quiet than say something wrong. Amen? Amen. So, you got to confess what? About Jesus. What well, are you confessing? That you're a sinner. That you're no good. You're, you're lower than a snake in a, a snake in a wagon wheel hole. You're low. John Newton knew that men amazing grace, how sweet the sound that saved a worm like me. That's the reason where we try to upgrade it, make you a friend and call it a wretch. But he said worm. Amen. Saved a worm like me. I once was lost down and I was blind, but now I see. He was a slaver. And got saved. Let me tell you what. When you get saved, Christ is going to change your life. Don't tell me you're saved and you're still the same person. If you want to be in Christ or a new creature, hold all old things are passed away and all things become new. The church is dying because people are not really born again. And they act like they're born again. They won't power. They won't control. They won't be on a committee. That won't do anything for your life in Christ. Amen. Or for the church is Christ. What we'll do, do something is for you to be a real deal. Be transparent. Not perfect, but belong to Jesus. Okay? Now, so A, B, C, admit, believe, confess. We're going to say it together. Ready? A is what? Amen. Admit. B is what? Amen. Believe, right? C is what? Amen. All right, you got it, don't you? There will be a midterm before we get through. So pay attention. Now, action, not just feelings. Feelings. Nothing more than feeling. Man, we're so full of feelings, it's not funny. We wear our feelings on our sleeve, get them hurt. Hey, if you want your feelings hurt, come to church early. That's the best place for all your feelings hurt. Well, so and so didn't talk to me today. Really? Maybe they didn't want to. Well, so and so didn't even notice my new car. Really? Well, so and so didn't notice my new hat. My new dress, my new seat, how good I looked. You're going to find this surprising. It ain't about you. It's about Jesus. I want to ask you a question. Do you see Jesus today? You talk about Jesus today? Was he in your midst today? It ain't me, but it is him. He's here before we get here, and here after we leave, and goes with us. Okay? So, I want to talk to you about proving your love. 
My wife, as you may know, I mean, I know she's in Phoenix three and a half months watching our grandson. Our son's in Kuwait. And uh, here's what our con we FaceTime every night. Boy, that FaceTime's a miracle. It, it really is now. Man, I tell you what, that bell had something. Alexander Graham Bell knew he was talking about that telephone deal, but he never would have thought about that Dick Tracy watch. Now, if you don't know what Dick Tracy watch is, you're in the older generation. Right, Harry? Okay, well, anyway. Every night we FaceTime, and I really enjoy that. And here's what we say every time we, we close out. I say, I love you. She says, I love you. I say, how much? A whole bunch. You say, well... How come? Because I love her a whole bunch. I want to make sure she loves me a whole bunch. I know she does. But I like to say, I like hearing it. Prove you love. Not just in words, but in deeds. When we love each other as a church, we don't make this lip service. We don't have to say it. In fact, people see it in us. Okay? Now, freedom isn't just an emotional feeling. Freedom is based on fact and actions. Our freedom is not just how we feel, but it's based on fact and actions. People have died for us before we can be free. Amen. Buried in our cemetery and around unknown battlefields. No one even knows where the body is, but God does. It's coming a day when I do a military funeral, coming a day when that great get up morning. That power that got incinerated over the ocean. That person got his body totally blown up by a bomb. So you couldn't find body parts you had to. God knows wherever molecule that person is. And when he raised, raised up that dead body to be reunited with that soul, that body's coming out of the ocean, coming out of that foxhole, coming out where it's buried. Nobody even knows, but God knows. Coming back with that glorified soul. Amen. Don't you tell me God's not enough. God's got every detail already settled about our future. We're more secure than if it already happened. But I want to talk to you about feelings. Feelings can shift and change. Salvation doesn't. Well, I just feel... Here's a raspberry for you. It ain't about what you feel. How dare we as Christians talk about our feelings? Well, I, you know... I, I just, my feelings just have changed. Okay, so you're human. But your salvation hasn't. You see, if your salvation changes, you don't have it. If it can be affected by stuff, you don't have it. If every wind that comes in your life changes your salvation, you don't have it. When you can stay in the boat with Jesus and endure the storm, you got it. Amen. For this too shall pass. Why do you think he quieted the storm? Anybody got storms in their life? By the way, you're either coming into a storm, in a storm, or going out of a storm. You're always in a storm. It's never fair weather. So you better be ready for the storm, and God's going to deliver us from that storm. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Well, salvation is based on the Calvary fact. I've been to Calvary. I've been in Israel. I've seen what they think Calvary was. That skull that Christ was crucified on. I can't begin today to tell you about all the details of crucifixion. I'll tell you one thing. It was horrible. Greatest battle ever took place when God fought evil for our sake. He went to the cross as a human being, human and God, and it was impaled like you put a sish kebab through a sharp stake. He was impaled on that cross and died for me and died for you. That we could look back to Calvary and say the price has been paid for my sin. I've been bought and I've been sought and Christ is my Savior. And I deserve to be crucified, but He was crucified for me. He became my atoning sacrifice and my substitute. When I was a kid, I played baseball. Not very well, Jeremy, but I tried to play. <laughs> I had the same problem with my baseball as I had my ROTC. I couldn't find a uniform to fit. They just didn't make a husky for a baseball, baseball player, you know. We went down to Kevin one time in West Kentucky to play some old country boys. We thought, well, this will be easy. And then we saw their pitcher. Like he had been pitching for the Braves like 20 years. He was about 30 years old. And we were all like 12. He threw the ball about 100 miles an hour and beamed everybody he threw one at. After the first three of our players was hit by that pitch and came back to the dugout crying, <laughs> the coach looked at us and said, okay, next batter. Nobody came out. We ain't going up there. The coach said, you got a bat. We're not batting up there. We're not going up there. Well, how come that guy's going to hit us the ball? It hurts. Look at those guys. They're still going. <laughs> he said, well, you can't win unless you bat. 
And you know what we all said together in one accord? Then forfeit. <laughs> We're not getting up there and getting beamed by that guy. That's a true story. Let me tell you what. Christ knew I couldn't take it. He took it for me. That's special, guys. That's what that scripture says. You can't find anybody to die even for a good person. But while we're still sinners, while I was still a sinner, still separated, still bad, still in sin, Christ died for me. You see, he didn't wait for me to get some type of moral level, good person. He died while I was still a sinner. That's love, proving your love for me. Well, salvation is based on the resurrection fact. He rose from the dead. He showed himself alive with many infallible proofs, the Bible says in Acts. And so, he not only died for me, he rose from me and lives today. He lives inside of me. How about you? He lives inside of you? Amen. Well, that's one of your proofs that, that you're saved. You say, well, somebody may not believe me. So, well, heck, I don't care if you believe or not. I know who lives in me. And they can live, he can live in them also. Because when Christ lives in you, he makes a difference. Well, salvation is based on our personal experience. You can deny anything else you want to deny, but you can't deny my personal experience. Where in 1958, I was seven years old, he saved my soul. I've been asking questions of my mother, getting her conviction. By the way, parents, when your child begins asking questions, you let them ask the question, answer that question until it satisfies them. You don't have to give them the whole theological treatise. Just answer a question. At the right time, God will draw them. And by the way, let your kids come. If they're not ready, we'll know that. I'll know that. Let them come. I've seen parents that stopped their kids and the kid never came. So you answer your children's questions about the Lord. Read the Bible to them. Don't let this Sunday school be the only thing that they hear about the Word of God. Read the Word of God. Teach the Word of God. Instill it in their minds and hearts, their young, tender souls, so when they start growing in the Word, they can endure temptation in the world. Salvation is a changed life. 2 Corinthians 5, 17, I'm to be in Christ. If anyone be in Christ, or a new creature. All old things pass away and all things become new. New life, new heart, new song, right? New joy. Change life. That's what it's all about. I don't want the old life. The old man, the old Adam needs to be dead. Now, occasionally he pops up. Yeah, push him back down. And live in that new Adam, the second Adam. Salvation is our reactivity to God's proactivity. I didn't find God. He found me. And he reached out to me. I respond to his love. So it's not just a feeling. It is action. Well, you see there about um, honor our heroes. We heard that verse this morning. Where love has no one in this, they lay his life down for his friends. That's what every military person killed in action has done. He may not have known us, but he laid down his life for a greater cause. Freedom. Jesus Christ went to the cross and died once. I want you to get this. The book of Hebrews says he died once and for all. If we're not saved by grace, he would have to die for me every single day. One time he died for me. You say, well, how come it's enough? Because he's enough. His perfection's enough. His righteousness is enough. His atoning grace is enough. You see behind me the tomb of the unknown soldier. In D.C. Arlington Cemetery. You may have been there seen the change of the guard. That's a marvelous sight. We don't know who's buried there. That's why it's called the Tomb of the Unknown Soldier. But soldiers that were died in action don't know who they are. But we want to remember those soldiers, both known and unknown, that died at Arlington around the world. The ceremony of changing the guard takes place 24 hours a day. There's nothing that stops that. No terror threat, no terror attack. Those soldiers train. Those soldiers have their procedure. Respectful, attention, marching, honor. Proud. I want to tell you, we as Americans, I'll be proud. We ought to stand for our country. We ought not be afraid to be patriotic. We live in time kind of like the 60s when it's kind of old-fashioned old to be patriotic. I got my flags out this week, this weekend, in my garden in front of my house. I got a red, white, and blue room on my door. I got a son serving in Kuwait. You have friends and family overseas. You got people around this world, even America, still serving. We need not be ashamed to be patriotic. We need patriotic. That's not a compliment to Christianity. That's a compliment to Christianity. And patriotism means that we stand for our nation and its values. Amen. 
If we don't stand for our values, we will fall for anything. And the problem in our country today is that we're not standing for the moral values of the Word of God. Amen. If I don't stand, do I really believe what I say I believe? No. You see, I, it's not about Democrat, Republican, Independent. It's not about political party. It's about Jesus. Amen. And don't equate a party with your faith. Because there's wrong people in both parties. Amen. Both parties are wrong. Both are imperfect. The only perfect person is Jesus Christ. Yeah. And so never let anything take priority over your faith in Christ. 